here today. The graph models a linear relationship between the temperature of the Earth's atmosphere and the altitude above sea level, which represents, uh, or which of the best uh, represents, or which of these best represents the rate of change of the temperature with respect to the altitude here. So key thing here is they are asking for rate of change. First thing I'm going to say right there is rate of change. That is slope. Essentially, they're asking, what is the slope of the line happening right here? So I notice it's going down from left to right, so I know it needs to be negative something, which all of our options are negative. So we're going to roll with that. Um, so as far as what's happening every one kilometer, so kind of looking right here at one kilometer, what's going on between one kilometer and zero kilometers right there. So it looks like that point right there, it's a around 15 and then after one kilometer it looks like it's just a hair below 10 so maybe eight or nine or something like that so it's going from nine minus 15 that's about down six right there and then if you want to say if you want to use your slope formula you'd say one minus zero right there which would be over one so it's about negative six now, none of the options are at exactly negative 6, so we're probably going with the closest option here. It looks like F right there. So um, that is how you do your rate of change right there. Just kind of looking at the steepness of your line right there. Just use logic. It definitely doesn't go down 3 because if, if it's at about halfway and then it goes down 3, it'd still be above this 10 right there, but it's actually below. So that's kind of my logic right there. I know H and J are just they're way too small. For that, uh, that's basically saying right here, go down 0.29 and then over one. So that'd be really, really uh, shallow or not very steep slope right there. So F has got to be your answer. Okay, 27 here. The value of Y is directly proportional to the value of X. If Y is 35 and X is 140, what is the value of Y when X is 70? All right, so uh, here's the key thing. They tell us it's directly proportional. All right. Now, two approaches you can do right here. You can think of proportion, and you can think of a fraction equals another fraction. Or you can think of this thing called di a directly proportional means direct variation. It means you can write an equation in this format, y equals mx, right there. Uh, so the first way I'm going to solve it here, I'm going to solve it with a proportion. So they say y is 35 and x is 140. Y is... 35 and x is 140. What is the y value when x is 70? Okay, and then you guys learned in middle school, hey, when you have a fraction equals another fraction, you're going to do what's called cross multiplication. You know, multiply those. That's 140y and then equals 70 times 35. So that's 2,450 right there. And then we can divide both sides by 140, and that comes out to 17.5. Then you would just go and bubble that in. Now, probably a more advanced way to do this right here is think about the direct variation. And we use what's called y equals mx. Or sometimes you might have seen it like this too. You might see y equals ax or y equals kx. You can use whatever letter you want out in front of x. Essentially what that k or that m is, that's basically the slope right there. And what they call it, they call it the constant of variation. All right, what is the constant of variation? It's essentially just the slope in a way with this situation and then if you think about it here if you're trying to get your slope by itself and figure out what the slope is if we divide both sides here by x and cancel out the x's your slope is y over x so we're going to put that our slope of our line is y over x so in this case here they tell us our slope they give us 35 is y and then x is 140 and then if you reduce that I think that comes down to 1 fourth okay so if we have our slope we can actually write an equation y equals 1 fourth and then that's that's the m and then times whatever x value you plug in and then since they're asking us what's going on at 
x equals 70, we can take that 70 and plug it right in. So 1 fourth of 70, and then that should come out, hopefully, to the 17.5 again. Okay, now, to me, one way is a little bit easier than the other. Uh, I like setting up the proportion and not having to deal with the equation, but you can also do deal with the equation, find your constant and variation, and find your equation afterwards. You have which expression is equivalent to m squared minus 13 m minus 30. So essentially what they're asking for is what uh, foils back into your answer. All right, so you would take these and go foil all of them together, or you can do what's called the opposite of doing foil or multiplying two binomials. We can do what's called factoring. So essentially, that's a binomial times a binomial. We, we would need to find two things that multiply to m squared. So that would be m and m. And then what multiplies the negative 30, but then at the same time, the same two numbers add up to this negative 13. All right, now, as far as factors of 30, you could say, oh, okay, maybe like a 1 and 30. And actually, one of them would need to be negative 1. So negative 1 and 30. You could go like negative 2, 15. Uh, you could go 3 and 10, or actually negative 3 and 10. You could go negative 5 and 6. You could also do all the opposite signs. So we're trying to find a combination, once again, that adds up to this negative 13 right there. Now notice here the two and the negative, or the negative two and the 15 right there, those add up to positive 13. So if I wanted to get it to add up to negative 13, we would switch those sides around. We'd just say n plus two and then n minus 15, and then equals, you know, that, or actually that's it right there, n plus two and uh, n minus 15. So that has to be f right there in this case. Now if you wanted to go back and double check, and actually I'll do it on the one here that I've already written on, you could foil this thing back together. First times first, m times m is m squared. Outside times outside, negative 15m. Inside times inside, that's 2n. Last times last, 2 times negative 15 is negative 30. Then combine your like terms. And you're done. All right, so that checks right there. That's kind of like the checking your work part. All right, but so the big thing on this one is we're going to factor. Next one here, the line on the graph on the grid uh, represents the first of two equations in a system of linear equations. So what does a system mean? That means you have multiple equations. In this case, we have two equations. One of them's graph, the other one is not. Now they tell us here that the other one crosses through these two points right here. Negative 12, comma 20, and 4, comma 12. Right, I'm going to try to be real precise with this while graphing this. So we got negative 12 comma 20, so that's way up there, and then we also have, what else, 4 comma 12, so that's right there. I'm going to try as best I can to draw a straight line through there. Use notability right there. It appears as if these lines are what we call parallel. All right. So the lines have the same slope. Therefore, if they have the same slope, as far as what is the solution, remember the solution, this is kind of like the intersection. So what does the intersection appear to be in this case? Or where would they cross eventually? Now, just by looking at it here, I can tell they're parallel. Therefore, they're not going to ever cross. Therefore, these aren't going to have a solution together. Now you gotta watch out, they might try to trick you or something, or maybe give you one where they draw the line differently, maybe something kind of going up like that, and then you would have to put the ordered pair where they cross at. They didn't in this case here, they didn't cross, so it's no solution. Um, so, yeah that's, all you can, yeah, that's all you can do there on that. A and B can't happen because they don't cross at those points. Um, so if it makes sure too, if you accidentally plot them wrong, you might get, it, you might get the points across. Um, now, as far as infinite number of solutions, this is like if they wound up being the same line. This is if they overlap. We could, I guess we could say overlapping lines right there. If that happened, it did not in this situation, so we don't need to worry about that. But there you go. So graph it right there. Graph the lines they give you see if it has an intersection. 
All right, last one in this section here. What is the domain of 9 and then minus x squared right there? All right, so this would be one here. Now, I don't have my graphing calculator thing ready to go, but I'm going to sketch what the graph looks like here. Kind of looks something kind of like this. Opens downward. It actually has a y-intercept at 9 right there. So that would be 0, 9 right there. That's a vertex. And it kind of goes down from there. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, the domain values, they might say that they go from negative 3 to 3 right there, wherever the x-intercepts are. And uh, domain values, you got to get in your head that these are all the x values. All right, And that's also kind of thinking on your continuous graph. So it's how far left and how far right this graph goes. And here's the deal. Since they are kind of going down, in left forever and down and right forever it keeps continuing past that line it never actually levels off so it keeps going down and right it goes down quicker than it goes left and right but it does go down uh, so since it goes left and right forever we say that the domain is all real numbers okay so that's, that's because it goes left and right forever All right, now they put some nice looking uh, possibilities here for domains. Some people might choose between negative 3 and 3 because of the x-intercepts. So that might be a possibility why someone might choose that. Someone might say, hey, it's the values below the 9 right here. And that would be a good, if they change this to y is less than or equal to 9, that would be what we call the range. All right, because it doesn't go past y, or it doesn't go past 9. Uh, but it starts at 9 and goes down below right there. So if they're asking for the range, that would be a good range answer. And then this one here is talking about your range values being greater than or equal to 9. Well, it doesn't go up. It goes down. So obviously F can't work out either. So G is your only good option there. And that is it for this video.